What is a cost equation? Uh, obviously, the cameras cost a little more, but you're talking about they can actually replace uh, a, a large number of cameras. Walmart, you mentioned, went from 26 to 7. What's, what's the cost equation? How do they come out? Uh, you know, how do you come out ahead? How many cameras can they actually replace? How many VGA cameras can they replace? Uh, and uh, what are the what are some of the cost considerations beyond that as to as to how they you know, how the value proposition works out? The value proposition is very easy to to show and demonstrate because the resolution is so much higher that you're able to reduce the number of cameras. So for example, a 1.3 megapixel camera will give you more than four times the resolution of a VGA camera. And so as you go up in megapixel, you have more and more coverage, which equates to reduction of the number of cameras needed to capture the area that you need to capture. When you reduce the number of cameras, of course you rec reduce the number of lenses, the number of IP addresses, license files, housings, uh, the installation time, and all the, all the materials involved. So when you start to do the math and really figure out what it is you come out with at the end, you come out on top. And now with H.264, with the reduction of bandwidth and storage that happens, um, it's an easy conversion. It's easy to make the justification. Now you talked about uh, some of Aricon's differentiation, especially in processor use. You showed, uh, yes. you showed uh, how, how do you accomplish that? special algorithms, and, and is that a key differentiation between types of megapixel cameras, how much processing power they use yeah. uh, um, in terms of just to do their work? Right. Well, H.264 is really, is really a game changer in the industry. And we were the first to come out with a full line of H.264 cameras, and people really started to take notice of what that meant. We were able to demonstrate live, when you looked at our camera running in motion JPEG and then switched it over to H.264, significant reduction in bitrate, uh, upwards of 15 to 20 times and more depending on the subject view. But you know, if you think, you think of an average number somewhere around five or six times reduction, even at that conservative number, that's a tremendous difference on what it costs to, to set up the infrastructure and to store all these images. So that made a big difference. What people understand about H.264, though, is that with H.264, they are used to seeing a reduction in image quality and an e increase in CPU demand by virtue of the processing that's required and the decompression of that image. That is true, but it's not true with the Aircon Vision product line. And in, in simple terms, the reason for that is that when our engineers developed our H.264 technology, they chose algorithms that would be the most efficient, the most effective in letting, you do the, letting us do the compression on the camera, reducing the demand for what kind of decompression has to happen at the head end. It's demonstrated in our partner platforms when you see on their systems the reduction in CPU usage. And when we demonstrate it with our camera, just in our, with our setup software, and you can see the, the, the graph that shows you how the CPU load is going down when you switch from JPEG to H.264. So the proof is in seeing it. Uh, what's, what's perhaps the drawbacks you hear most or the most, the most obstacles to really mm -hmm. getting megapixel out there in spite of the value problem? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we've had a tremendous year. So even in this economy, you know, knock on wood, we're doing very well in, in these times. Um, you know, some projects are being put on hold, delays on pulling the trigger on making decisions to spend money, but by and large things are doing very well. The biggest obstacles we have is, is people's understanding of what this technology means and their ability to migrate over to this technology. Not just megapixel, but the move from analog to IP. And so it is different. There's a whole different lexicon of, of the IT world. It's a whole different way of doing the projects. Um, you know, as one of my colleagues says though, it's really not that much different when you get right down to it. I mean, a network is, is just a network. We all have telephones in our homes. We've all been on a network for decades. You know, more than 100 years we've had telephones. So, uh, you know, this is something that, that people just have to conceptualize and understand what can be done. Now, obviously, you've done a lot with H.264, which is a which is a broadcast standard. Uh, standards are under under development for digital video. Uh, how important are those going to be? And, and, and you know, there's OnBIF, there's PSIA, but aside from the differences, let's look at it from kind of a higher level. How how important are those 
video standards going to be toward greater uh, greater adoption of digital, greater right. adoption by being and therefore megapixel cameras? Well, I think it remains to be seen. You know, who's going to come out on top, if you will? You know, who's going to be the winner of Onviv PSIA? Well, what's going to be the standard? But compliancy and having a standard that all manufacturers adhere to is obviously going to open the doors. It means that everybody can shake hands, everybody can work together, and we can all win. So I think ultimately when that happens, it'll be very advantageous. Oh, there's been, uh, earlier, preceding you, uh, Charles Foley spoke uh, about storage issues, and, and he especially talked about the, 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 the challenges Megapixel creates with storage. <laughs> Do you work with storage vendors? Do you recommend uh, storage platforms or architectures? Or do you approach users with kind of, here's Megapixel, we know what it will do, we know the advantages. Mm -hmm. Do you help them work with work through storage uh, Certainly. storage platforms and, and handle We do, we do. You know, we work with a lot of different partners. Uh, the, the, uh, the approach of working as a, manu a camera manufacturer with a storage provider to go into a project is sort of a bookend approach to a project providing a solution. Uh, what, what typically happens is when I set up my cameras and let people see what they can do, that's when the wheels start turning and they start to realize what these cameras can do to solve problems that they've got. But then the question is, how do I handle all this data? <clears throat> well, if I have a storage provider with me in that meeting, he's got the other bookend. He can describe how his solution can, can receive and process and store all this data from our cameras. So that is an effective way to go about doing it, and we've done that successfully in the past. But frankly, with H.264 and the reduction in storage and, and uh, bandwidth requirements, uh, this really is, again, changing the game in terms of storage. You know, if I say conservatively six, six times, maybe eight times, ten times reduction in storage, well, gosh, you know, actually, when you think about it, if a, if a VGA camera is about, let's say, 2.5 megabits per second at a high frame rate, um, and I can take a two megapixel camera, run it at H.264, and be in about that same ballpark, 2.5 to 3 megabits per second. I mean, that changes everything, and that's what we're dealing with right now. So it's affecting um, how much of a demand there really is. Illustration you made right at the end where the, the casino was interested most in keeping that high roller happy, making sure he's got the drink. Um, how can this expand into examples like this? How can this expand into business intelligence, into using video as a way of gathering and ultimately processing information in a strategic way to the, to, to the, to the business mission? So mm -hmm. Megapixel resolution really lends itself to what video analytics is accomplishing and would like to accomplish even better. Um, the question is, is video analytics ready for megapixel? And in some cases, they are. There are examples of that out there, where they're actually using megapixel technology and doing tremendously more advanced metadata analysis. So, you know, we really are, are sort of pushing the envelope for, for analytics. We're saying, I'll give you all that detail. I mean, you want to see that license plate? You want to see the frame on that license plate and what it says? You want to look at the pattern in that guy's necktie to make sure it's the guy you've got? We can do that with Megapixel. The question is, can you, can you process it and, and utilize it? So, you know, the task is at hand. Um, I believe that, that analytics will grow, will continue to grow as, as a viable solution. Um, and I think it's going to do it with Megapixel, ultimately.